Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gracie Mansion. Uh, if you would uh, please uh, remain standing for the presentation of colors by USC Service Color Guard and then the national anthem sung by Grammy Award winner B.B. Winans. B.B.? dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last Thank you. Uh, please continue to stand for the invocation, which will be given by Captain Bruce Boyle, Regional Chaplain of Navy Region Mid-Atlantic. Captain? Good morning, everyone. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Almighty God, we give you great thanks for this wonderful time of year in which we celebrate once again New York Fleet Week. Almighty God, thank you for the warm hospita hospitality of all New Yorkers as they treat us with great love and great care. We thank you for all who have worked so hard to put this week together, both civilian and the military. God bless every single one of us as we enjoy one another and celebrate the cause of freedom. Bless all of our first responders and our military and all of our families who have love us and support us and watch over us. Almighty God, with the many blessings that you have given us, we thank you so much for the cause of freedom. And because of that, we take time to remember those who have paid that ultimate cost, all of our first responders, all of our military, Almighty God, we honor them and thank you for their dedicated service. Now watch over us, bless our fleet week, bless our time together because we give you thanks, Almighty God, for the wonderful country that you have given us, the United States of America. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you. Present the colors. Thank you. You may be seated. On behalf of the City of New York, it is now my distinct honor to welcome you all to our 25th annual Fleet Week, a big week for our city. 
This year also happens to be the bicentennial of the War of 1812 when the U.S. Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard distinguished themselves by displaying unmatched bravery. And to commemorate that, Fleet Week this year also includes nine tall ships. And I'd like to expend, extend a special welcome to the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greenert, and the family members of our servicemen and women who are joining us this morning. We also have the honor of being joined by members of three Marine units, the 8th Marine Regiment, the MV-22 Osprey Squadron, VMM-264, and the 1st Battalion of the 9th Marines, all based in North Carolina. And you should know they have just returned from a one-year tour in the Helmand province of Afghanistan. So thank you all for your service, and welcome home. Hurrah! Now, it's wonderful to be here to celebrate the extraordinary work of our sea services, the Navy, Marines, and Coast Guard. Fleet Week is a chance for thousands of our brave service members to enjoy some well-deserved shore leave, and it also gives New Yorkers the chance to express our appreciation for those who wear the uniforms of our nation's armed services, and those of several of our allies who are here as well, including Canada, the United Kingdom, Finland, and Japan, whose vessels are in our harbor and whose service members also present protect, put themselves in harm's way to protect us. And I've also met some people from Spain and Colombia uh, who are here in their ships. And uh, if I miss anybody, I apologize. Uh, here in New York City, we do uh, respect and cherish your service and your courage. Uh, after all, the memory of 9-11 still is fresh in our minds and thousands and thousands of New Yorkers including many of our city government employees have volunteered to defend our nation overseas. So we really do have a special appreciation for what you do. And that's why we want to ensure that when our service members come back home, we welcome them with more than just words and medals. Our administration is partnering with the Robin Hood Foundation to serve all of New York's more than 207,000 veterans including those who have returned from Iraq and those who have returned and will return from Afghanistan. And together with Robin Hood, our Office of Veterans Affairs and a number of city agencies, we'll help many more vets find jobs, homes, and get the services they need. And that includes opening a new job placement center in Manhattan solely dedicated to serving our city's veterans. And this new center won't just serve veterans, it will be staffed by veterans as well who will really understand what the people they're trying to help have gone through and how we can say uh, thank you and make sure that uh, they can uh, become part of the great American dream that they fought so hard to protect. Uh, thank you, George. Uh, but as we plan for the future, we also honor the memory of those who have passed, those who have selfishly given their lives to defend our nations. Uh, all Americans will be doing that this Memorial Day weekend. Uh, since September 11th, 01, 91 New Yorkers have given their lives to preserve the freedoms and values that make us a target for terrorism. And the family members of some of those brave New Yorkers are here with us this morning. Uh, today and every day, uh, we remember the bravery, the service, and the sacrifice of your loved ones as we honor their memories. We will keep working to make New York a place that they would be proud of. This is what they fought for, a city where people can come from all over the world and express themselves, pray the way they want to pray, uh, be in charge of their own destinies, and have a real future for their families. And that's why, uh, that's something that people, unfortunately, elsewhere in the world want to take away from us. But for the history of this country, we've never let them do that. And when other people have been threatened, we've always uh, come to the defense of people around the world. We have an enormous amount to be proud of. And uh, I can just tell you, uh, it's sad, maybe some of our kids don't understand what it means to be America and, and what America means to the world, but uh, it's our obligation to make sure they do. We're trying to do that with the World Trade Center Memorial downtown. We're trying to do that to w the way we conduct ourselves here in the city uh, every year and every day, and we're gonna continue to do that. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Chief of Naval Operations, a man with a long, distinguished military career in service, uh, Admiral Jonathan Greenert. Admiral Greenert and I actually have a lot in common. He's an engineer, I'm an engineer. He reached the top rank of one of America's most treasured uniform services. I am an Eagle Scout. <laughs> he, 
Well, my, I think my parents were pleased when I became an Eagle Scout at age 12, but it's a long time ago. Uh, he leads the most powerful Navy on the planet. I shop at Old Navy. Uh, Admiral, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> Very good, Mr. Mayor. It's not easy to write this stuff. Very good. Very good. It's hard to top that, but uh, one thing I did notice, Mr. Mayor, when you say uh, such and such happens, I noticed that this morning, things happen. When I say we're going to do this, the debate begins. Uh, there's a little bit of difference here. And, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much uh, for this morning, for the week, uh, and I want to thank uh, the citizens of New York for once again putting on the best Fleet Week that we can ever attend and take part in. And I would commit to you, Mr. Mayor, we will behave ourselves right, during this week, and all of my commanders out there <laughs> will see to it. International, too. I know your Chiefs of Navy out there, personally, every single one of them. Uh, but again, uh, a wonderful week. There's a there's an international flair, as the mayor said today, which makes this a special Fleet Week. But it is also the two. We are uh, celebrating the 200th commemoration of the War of 1812. Uh, very special to us. Uh, did you know that about 200 years ago, the British blockaded New York? By cracking, you couldn't get things in or out of here. And I will commit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that will never happen as long as I am the chief of naval operations. <laughs> All right. I'm going out on a limb here, but I, I'm pretty confident about that. Uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard, a large part of your Navy's development uh, since the War of 1812, all the way up to the Navy uh, that we have today, and it is the best Navy in the world. We have uh, partners in the Marine Corps uh, and in the Coast Guard, which make us special sea services. Today, your Navy, as it was in the War of 1812, led by commanders who are bold and innovative, and that is the difference. That and crews who are confident and who are proficient and ships that are well built and resilient uh, and have the highest technology and that's what we owe our folks today, your kids who are out there. Now this is Memorial Day weekend, we have to remember that and I would like to uh, give my thank you very much and I think we all should remember uh, the folks who have fallen, the recent folks who have fallen in the, in, the, in the conflicts of today. There are gold star mothers here today. Uh, that is mothers who have given so much and have committed their children, allow their children to serve and their children who have fallen. So Gold Star Mothers represent the families who are the wind under the wings of our folks who are able to serve in the armed forces and I thank you very much for that. Uh, so the lessons that we've learned before will apply in the future. So uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I have one last item. Uh, on behalf of your sea services, I would like to present this uh, token of our appreciation and memorial of the Bicentennial and this Fleet Week, your sea services. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Admiral, uh, just to show that uh, America has a great heart and we do let bygones be bygones, uh, you pointed out that we uh, fought the British in 1812 and also, if I remember, in something like 1776. Uh, but to show that all is forgiven, I married a Brit. <laughs> she is uh, still one of my best friends, the mother of my two daughters. And uh, I'm actually going to England uh, tonight uh, for just one day and I will tell the Prime Minister that you have forgiven him as well. <laughs> Uh, let me thank the Navy Band Northeast Combo for playing this morning and HBO for sponsoring this reception once again. I also want to thank Eli Zabars, H&H &H Midtown Bagels, Manhattan Fruit Exchange, and Sid Wayner and Sons for providing this morning food and refreshments. And thank you all in particular for coming. Uh, please enjoy your time in the world's greatest city. Uh, whether you go to a Mets game at City Field or a Broadway show or visit Times Square, or one of our 130 museums, 1,800 parks, or eat in one of our nearly 25,000 restaurants, uh, I think you're gonna find something that really is different. Uh, when you walk down the streets of New York City, 40%, four out of every, uh, uh, 40 percent of the people, two out of every five people who you see will living here will have been born outside of the United States. It is far and away the most diverse city in the world. 
Uh, I'd like to think that we are friendly. I'll leave that to you to discover. But I think <laughs> you hear all the time that people like coming to New York. We had, to, we have to be doing something right. We had 50 million visitors to this city last year. And I would urge all of you, uh, you want to go to the Hudson River Park along the park where you're most of you anchored. Uh, the High Line, which is just next two blocks away from the park. It's an elevated park on an old railroad line. You should go to Central Park. Uh, you should uh, walk in Times Square at 11 o'clock at night where you'll see 20,000 people on the streets. Um, you should go to visit some of our stores. And then we have five boroughs, and the boroughs really are uh, very diverse in terms of style and pace and culture. And no matter where you come from around the world, we probably have more people from the second largest city in your country living here than lives in that second largest city. It is a very diverse, and you really will enjoy it. I come from Boston, but I really have become a New Yorker. Uh, so uh, enjoy. And no matter what your language, no matter what your religion, no matter what kind of food you want or what you want to say, this is the place for you. And uh, you should know, incidentally, uh, as a small token of our gratitude, during Fleet Week, military members will receive discounts at our New York City si uh, city stores uh, located in downtown Manhattan, where you can buy some uh, stuff for, uh, uh, to show that you were here. Uh, you can also visit our city store at nyc.gov. So uh, God bless all of you. God bless our armed forces. God bless the United States of America. And now to close our program, I would like to welcome, once again, Grammy Award winner B.B. Williams. Uh, Winnens to uh, sing God Bless America. Evie? I want to say, Mayor, I, I just got off the plane and I, I promise you it was a technical problem. I know the national anthem, <laughs> even though I'm a little bit sleepy. But I just wanted to come and say thank you to all of you for your sacrifice and your service. Sweet up. Oh. 
God bless you.